So this week we're going to take off where we left off last week, as far as the shop roof goes anyway. As you can see, there's still tarps on there. It's not finished, but it's a lot closer this week than it was last week. Oh, thanks to some help from uh, friends, viewers of the channel, my buddy Andy out of Iowa and my buddy Al out of Minnesota, along with my dad and my son. Obviously, they helped as well when they could. So I want to share with you the footage that I got this week and where I'm at at this moment. So a couple days and I'll be done with this thing. And that'll be nice to be under a new dry roof. So thanks for watching. Let's get started. So this week pretty much started off with a trip to the lumber store. Me, Al, and Andy loaded up in the old square body to go get the fascia board that I needed to run around this building. I didn't have everything that I needed. And uh, while they were here, my goal was to get this roof at least to the point to where I can shingle it. So me and Andy are working on the last row of sheeting. Me and my dad finished up to this point and he had to go so we decided we'd finish this up. We had to before we could get on to the fascia board and uh, the drip edge and so so on. Now some people brought up last week that I'm not spacing these sheets. They suggest that you space your sheets from each other, sheets of plywood, by an eighth of an inch to account for expansion. All I did was after it was all down is run a saw down all the joints. It worked just as good. You do need to space them because they do grow, but that's my answer to the problem. So they make clips that space these boards and support them in between the trusses. See my trusses are on two foot centers, so you're walking basically on the ply with no support under it in between each truss. This 5 8 ply in my opinion doesn't need them, but if you were using something thinner, they'd probably be a benefit rather than a hassle to install, you know, and make your roof more solid by connecting each piece to the next. So on this roof, I extended the overhangs in every direction, front, back, and both sides to give this roof a little larger umbrella than it originally had. Now the overhangs from the front and the back of the building were different from each other. Why? I'm not for sure. But the front of the shop had about a 12 inch overhang which I extended to 14 inches. The back had a 6 inch overhang which I also did at 14 inches. And like I've shown in past videos, we went 12 inches extra on the ends which turned out really nice and gave this roof a really nice, nice look. You know, it definitely shields the building much better than it did before. So let's do a quick little mock-up of the roof here. Imagine this is the corner of my roof. That's the roof peak and this is the, the bottom corner. So we got drip edge on first, 
on the bottom. Then we put our drip edge on the side that overlaps the piece on the bottom. That way if any water gets on this drip edge, it will run over this one and off instead of down and under it. Then you put on your membrane, tar paper, felt paper, whatever you decide you want to use. There's just not a lot here in this stuff, really. It does work, but you know, there's better alternatives. Then a shingle starter strip, which it's just best to buy a starter strip and not try to use a shingle as your starter strip. Some people will do that. They will cut a shingle right along the center here. You can see it has an adhesive layer or adhesive bead there which works in the same manner as a drip edge, but one piece is better than multiple pieces cut, butted up together. So you can see it has that adhesive layer there, and what that does is that holds down that last layer of shingles so the wind doesn't blow it up, and it also gives you protection in that first gap on your three-tab shingles, that first row of gaps. Without it, a starter strip, you'd have no protection on that first row. You basically be exposed to the sun and the rain right on your vapor barrier, which if you used felt paper, it wouldn't last long and you'd have a leak and it would rot out the bottom of your roof. And there you go, it wouldn't be, wouldn't be good. And then your shingles are just staggered from that point on. And every row above this has that sticky layer that holds down you know, the ends of the shingles and helps. And your nails are staggered where they're not shown. So that's pretty much it, really. I mean, a real, basic description, but that's the way it's laid out. So this lower side near the creek, we're putting the fascia on it. It's the side that I dreaded the most because you can't get a ladder down there because the hillside's just so narrow. You can, but it's unsafe. And luckily this roof's not all that steep. So we got two guys down there on a ladder um, and me up here you know, attaching the fascia. Then it's time for drip edge and then the membrane. Uh, you know, I look forward to getting on here because then I don't have to worry about the tarps. So we're pushing, hopefully, before dark, get the drip edge on and get that membrane going on. So a few videos back when I widened this roof by a foot, what I did is nailed a bunch of long 2 before to the ends of the trusses and then pulled a string down the building and cut all the truss tails off to that string. Well, in doing that, my string must have got hung up on on one of the truss tails and kind of gave me a few that were quite uneven or didn't reach out to my fascia like all the others. Had I to do over, I would have definitely set a truss tail on each end of the building, pulled a string, and then set each individual truss tail out to the string. I think I would have got a better job that way. Now, as far as lumber, I used three quarter inch thick by six inch wide treated. So it should last a long time. But you know, it all worked out, but it was a learning experience. We're gonna have to do like we did on the back side. So he lets your end down and I'll hold it up. And... I'm gonna have to be over there on the big ladder, or you can do it, whatever, yeah. and let that end down. And we're gonna have to start down here. Okay. Cause we got the hoopty loop down here like we did on the other side. Yep. Is that going to work, Steve, there? Or? This will work where it's at. All right, well, then let's start one more. So you start down there. You got it? Yep. Because you're going to have to let your end down to let this. How's that? That's better. Just work your way up. That should it was just right here at the end. Oh. There we go. Dang. So this is Clyde, the Border Collie. Uh, my buddy Andy, who's here helping me, uh, brought Clyde along with him and Clyde's been a good dog. He usually lives in town. Andy was a little bit scared that he would maybe run off, but that's not the case. He's been a good boy, haven't you, Clyde? Been real good. Where's your dad? Go find him. What do these need to overlap? Inch and a half, two inches? Couple inches, I would think. Anything 
better than nothing. I really do. It's one of those things that just I don't I, I despise them because they climb up on trees, then they take all the light out of the trees, and then the trees don't go, and then the vine takes over. It's like no, 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 no. So you are going to be no more, Mr. Pine. No more for you. Glad you left the pipes up here. That's a good sign. Very nice. Thank you. Hold on, let me get my let me get my camera so I can watch you roll down the hill. Oh no, we need no, we need none of that. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. Very wet, wet. What the hell doing? He's about to roll down the hill. No. I got my vine. He did. And I got my pipes that you were so kind to have left. So here's the membrane that I'm using. This is a wind corning, obviously, ice and water shield or barrier. Just a really heavy peel and stick membrane, nothing like felt paper, although it does basically do the same thing. This stuff's just a lot better. It's also quite a bit more expensive, but if you want a roof that doesn't leak, if it gets a little bit of wind damage or hail damage, this is the stuff to get. You know, it's almost like a second roof in my opinion and is some really good stuff although it's a little tricky to put down because it's extremely sticky and you have to get your rows straight so that's the only downside is it's tough to lay down without getting you know big knots and stuff in it but we've been successful so far the other side's basically done and we're about to sweep this side clean and then lay down our vapor barrier So before this stuff goes down, it's recommended that your roof be clean. All the sawdust, mud from your shoes, stuff like that needs to be swept off of it, or else this stuff just doesn't stick very well. You know, we did our best to sweep and blow this thing off as best as we could, and it helped. Although, you know, you never get it all off, but if you can get the majority off of it, it makes a difference. So the weather was in our favor putting this stuff down. It was just a little cool outside, which made this stuff not quite as sticky as it would have been if the weather was 95 degrees outside. Kind of like a roll of electrical tape. You know, cold electrical tape doesn't stick as well as hot a hot roll does. And that allowed us to pull this stuff up if we got a kink or a bubble in it and, and fix it. So we got this stuff laid down relatively smooth, but I can imagine if it was really hot outside, You'd get one chance to stick this stuff down, and uh, otherwise you'd probably end up pulling up slivers of plywood with it. It's that sticky. 
So that's a double one. What are you doing, Clyde? What are you doing? Holding the paper down? So unfortunately we were a couple rows short of being able to cover this roof with the membrane. We just didn't order enough. Just an error on, uh, on our part of how much that we needed. But luckily this stuff's not that hard to get, you know, a couple days out at max. Uh, which gives me plenty of time to, you know, start shingling from the bottom. But unfortunately these guys had to go, Andy and Al both, you know, got long trips ahead of them. I appreciate their help more than you can imagine. It really moved me forward quite a bit and I wouldn't have been able to get near as much done without these two guys. So hats off to them for all the hard work and help over the last couple days. We can go down and evaluate it once we get this one done. I didn't know if it was. Oh, well, that'll work out all right. Um, yeah, and then the next one just goes over there. One more roll. Pretty much would have done it. Pretty much. What do you think? About what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> About the roof so far. Oh. Had to keep these covered so that the shingles didn't get wet. Yeah. I think shingles uh, are designed to get wet. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think water won't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep them covered anyway. <laughs> So that's my, for my first row of shingles. Huh? Yeah, that'd be fine. Uh, yeah, but I don't think I'd want to. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. People do it all the time. Yeah, but not me if I can help it. 
<laughs> Not a long job. So I set my first row of shingles to a string line, giving me a half inch overhang over the drip edge. And then, you know, did a couple rows and then snapped another string line. Pretty much everything you need that I've seen is on the shingle, really. They've got little cuts in them to keep you spaced proper and you know, it's pretty easy to achieve a even five inch reveal on these just based on the cuts in the shingle. So it's kind of hard to get crooked if you, you know, don't pay it unless you don't pay attention. But I'm doing four nails per shingle. Some people do up to six. I think four is more than enough where my building's located because you know, we just don't see any wind down here. You know, maybe a little swirling wind, but no sustained high winds like you get in a lot of areas being down in this valley. So it's working out really good, and these things go down pretty quick. Leaves are coming down, aren't they? Won't be long, they'll be all gone. <laughs> they'll fill that empty spot. And some crackers. Granny's always packing veinies and crackers, ain't she? He likes his sausages, don't he? I ain't seen a dog that didn't like them. Yeah, he, he likes them. You want this last cookie? <coughs> no. Well, I guess I'll eat it then. When you got a roof off like this, there's no time to, to do anything but finish it, you know? You get so much bad weather this time of the year. I know. So much rain. This should have been done two months ago. Yeah. It's getting late. But, you know, you do it when you can, right? Do it when you have the opportunity. It's better for to put a roof on in hot weather. Oh yeah, well it activates that uh, that tar. Mm -hmm. It makes them seal down. Mm -hmm. That's what they say. You don't get much wind here though. Mm -mm. Get the occasional, you know, swirling breeze, but being down in this bottom. No, we don't get much wind. It blows right over top of us. <clears throat> well, oh, I'm going to start popping these shingles down.
So that's it this week, guys, and it has been one heck of a week. Huge thanks to Al and Andy for coming down and helping me out. Putting that fascia around this building, not a one-man job. It's really, it was, it was sketchy as it gets, but, you know, it's on there. Nobody got hurt. The roof is almost finished, and I'm excited about it. Putting that membrane down, I could, probably couldn't have done that by myself. It's pr at least a three-man job on a hot day, probably a four-man job to get that stuff down without getting it all kinked up and you know knots in it but we laid it down and it, it went on really well i'm impressed with that product and time will tell but i don't expect we'll have any any leaks in this roof huge thanks to my dad as well for coming and helping me out uh getting these getting me started on getting these shingles down probably a third of the way done and that was within a couple hours and you know we were learning as we go so I'd look to finish this in another day probably it with his help but surely another day and I can get this shingled so it'll be nice to have a place that doesn't leak anymore that's for sure I'm excited about it so that's it thanks for watching guys I really appreciate it thanks to my viewers patrons and subscribers like I always say you guys are the reasons I can do this and I truly appreciate it so that's it thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower. Waiting for the sun